Welcome back. In this video, we will create a data source using WebLogic scripting tool. In the previous video, we have seen an WLST example along with development tools, script recording, and WLST basic commands. I would recommend you to watch that video if not already. The link is in i button. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to check out my channel for more interesting videos related to WebLogic administration and SOA development. Now without any further delay, let us see all the steps. So first we will connect and edit the session. So when we use connect command, you can also supply username password and connection string here uh, but we are directly going to use that connect and uh, if you don't want to put username and password you can refer my previous video and you will be able to use store user config function for that after that we are going to enter in edit session and then we are going to create a session so that we can edit that so let's see this in action so we are in the console and we are going to connect to WLST. For that I am going to run java weblogic.wlst command. Now we are connected to offline mode. So we are going to run connect function here. And uh, we are inside online mode. And after that we are going to run edit. So you can see we are inside our writable tree and now we are going to start the session. So our edit session has been started and in last we will have to save and activate our changes uh, once we are done. Next step is to create data source. So for that we will go to the root path and then we will run this create JDBC system resource function using cmo so cmo stands for current managed object and here we are going to pass the name of our data source so let us see that so we are going to root and here we will run create jdbc system resource function and it returns mbean for the same so in this step we have created jdbc system resource in the next step we are going to create jdbc resource so we'll set the name and uh, type of data source and you can see now we have our data source inside system resource hierarchy and in the data source type you can give generic uh, which stands for generic data source you can also utilize other values based on the data source type and it is listed here so let us set the name of data source so now we are inside jdbc resource and we will run set name and the name of data source and now we will set the type of data source that is generic now the next step is to set a jndi name so for that you can go to jdbc resource and then jdbc data source params and then you'll have to set jndi name here so let's see that so first we will cd to jdbc data source params and then we will set the jndi name that is jdbc slash my data source hit enter now the next step is to set connection url and driver name so here you can see we have a connection url for our database which we want to connect using data source and here we have a driver name that is oracle driver so this is a driver string for non xa driver if you want to use xa then you'll have to change this string and you'll have to run this operation inside jdbc driver params so let's see that so earlier we were inside data source params and now we'll go to driver params so let's see that as you can see now we are inside jdbc driver params and now we'll set the url so you will have to change this connection string based on your database configuration 
and then we'll set the driver name so you can see driver name has been set next step is to set the password for the data source and here you can see that uh, we are using encrypted value for the password because it is a good practice to use encrypted value rather than plain text and if you have created your domain in the production mode it won't allow you to use plain text as well so let us see how to generate an encrypted value for the password to encrypt the password you can run java weblogic.security.encrypt and it will ask for a password then you can enter the password and it will give encrypted value remember you can only run this uh, from the domain home so change the directory to domain home first and then try to run this command and now let us set the password so this property works inside jdbc driver params only so you won't have to change the hierarchy let's hit enter so our password has been set in the next step we are going to set the username so for that we'll have to create a property that is user and once this property is created we'll give the value to this property which is system in our case which is the username for the data source We'll have to change username based on your requirements. So first we'll go to JDBC driver params and inside that we'll have to go to properties for the data source and then we'll be able to create the property that is user. So let's see it. So let us go to properties and now we'll create a property that is user. So our property user has been created now we'll have to go inside this property so let us run ls and you can see we have a properties here let us run ls again and you can see we have a user here which is just created by us so let's go inside user and now we'll set the value for this user that is system which is our username so this is done next step is to set the transaction and target so here you can see we are setting the transaction as one phase commit you can also use two phase commit as per your database and to target the data source you'll have to mention the target name and the target type so set target is used for that and here we are targeting to admin server and the type is server if you want to target it to cluster you'll have to write the cluster name like osb cluster here or type you'll have to mention as cluster if you want to target it to cluster so let's see so we'll go inside data source param and we'll set the global transaction that is one phase commit and now we'll go to jdbc system resources and set the target so this is done and in the final step we are going to save and activate the change uh, you can see that on the screen so let's do it so we'll run save and uh, then we can activate our change so you can see our change has been activated and uh, we can verify that in the admin console as well so we are inside admin console let's go to data sources and here we have our new data source that is my data source and you can see the type of data source is generic and this is the jndi which we have set and uh, in the target we have admin server so let's open this and when you go to connection pool you can see the url the driver class and uh, the user details here let's go to monitoring and test it and uh, under the testing tab you can click and test and you can see we are able to connect it now we will merge all the steps and write a wlsj script so we are going to use variables so that we can uh, make it more dynamic so let's see it so on the screen you can see the list of commands which uh, we run as part of our video 
and uh, we are going to create a script out of this so let's do it so at the top i am going to create some variables so we have created variables for data source name url encrypted password username target name and target type so wherever we are using this value we are going to replace it with the variable so let's do it so i am going to use find and replace command to do the same So we are replacing the value of variable with variable itself. And in the set URL also we are going to use variable. So let's do it. You can also replace driver string if you want. Let's also replace this. And here also we are going to replace it with the variable. And you can see this time we are using target name is OSB cluster and target type is the cluster instead of server. So you can see we have replaced all the hard coded values with the variable name. Let us add some print statement so that we can so that we can get those messages when we run the script. So before connect, I am adding this statement. It is going to print weblogic data source creation script and uh, before connecting to admin server it is going to print connecting to admin server. Similarly we will add a print statement for the creation of data source for the JNDI for URL and the driver. For the password. For the user and for the transaction and uh, targets and once all is done we can have a message like data source creation is completed so our script is ready we are going to save it in a py file and we'll try to run it but before that we are going to delete our data source so for the deletion i am using admin console and i am going to delete it from here and we'll activate the changes now i'll copy this script and uh, let's exit from the wlst first and i'm inside the domain you can keep this script wherever you want i'm creating one script for the data source creation and I'm naming it as create data source.py. So you can see this is our script. So let's save this and let's try to run this script. So to run this script, we will run Java weblogic.wlst and the script name. And you can see it is printing all the print statements we put in the script. And uh, our changes were successfully activated. Let us go to console and see. So let's refresh this page. And you can see we have our data source created and it is now targeted to OSB cluster. And in the connection pool, you will be able to see all those properties which we set earlier. Thank you for watching this video. I have uploaded this script in the Git. If you found this video helpful, please like my video, subscribe my channel, and hit the bell icon for the further notification. And don't forget to leave a comment so that I can come and bring different different topics for you. Thank you.